Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights presented by the Allegheny Health Network and St. Vincent. I'm Jay Pushkar and he's Mike Fenner. Mike, while the Erie Otters opened up the regular season on home ice versus Sudbury, we have reached the halfway point of the high school football season as we're into week number five. That's right, Jay. And the marquee matchup this week was in Region 8 between Erie High and McDowell. The Trojans looking to stay undefeated on the season. McDowell all-time leading rusher A.J. Fenton, the honorary captain against Rob Matt's Erie Royals in Class 6A tonight, first quarter. No score until the former Royal Danny Blue totes the rock in from three yards out. 7 nothing Trojans get, getting on the board there. Erie looking to get some offense going on the other end of the field. And who better to find than Trayvon Tate as he takes this direct snap, gets into a pile of Trojan defenders, finds his way into a first down, big pickup at the drive, would stall. And how about next McDowell possession? Looks like an easy touchdown, right, Chris? You know to Zach Edmondson, but it's broken up. Nasir Paisley. Nice job in the secondary there. That forces a three-point try here. The field goal attempt for Lenny the Leg McLaughlin. 25 yards and good. Trojans lead it 10-0. In the second, Trojans cashing in. It's Damon Baraducci in from six yards out for the score. 17-0 Trojans. And then make it 24-0 later in the quarter. Elijah Lopez makes his way into the end zone at nearly 70 yards and a score. Five different players record rushing touchdowns for McDowell. They had two in the second half. Erie adds a score late. McDowell wins this one 38-8 to move to 5-0 with a win over their rival Royals. It's a crazy feeling. It's surreal, honestly. Um, uh, our guys just compete every single play, um, even in off season and now in practice. And it's really paying off now for us. Our backs really ran hard and broke a lot of tackles. Uh, guys were physical up front, had to make a few adjustments with what they were doing, but really impressed with our defense. Our defense was, was outstanding against a, a team that I always say has a ton of talent and uh, really kept them off the scoreboard until the last minute of the game. It feels great to come out 5 0, come out strong, coming to be the best, and that's what we want right there. Game. On the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard, McDowell stays perfect, winning 38-8. Danny Blue, 14 carries, 99 yards, and a touchdown. And five different players score rushing touchdowns for the Trojans in the win. Meanwhile, Cathedral Prep coming off its first loss of the season, coming up just short 21-14 last Friday against nationally ranked and defending Ohio State champion St. Edward from Cleveland. Yeah, Jay, uh, that was only Prep's third loss ever at Dollinger mm -hmm. Field as their home field. They certainly had no plans to make it back-to-back -back home losses tonight. And we'll check out the highlights as head coach Mike Mishler and his quarterback Colin Johnson and company trailing Benedictine 24-7 in the third quarter. But here come the Ramblers. Johnson, a pass into the flat to Luke Sittinger for a big first down play. That would lead to a prep field goal to cut it to a two-possession game as they trail 24-10. After a prep stop on defense, it's Johnson back to work, finding Sittinger on the middle screen. Nice little catch there, and he is off to the races. Picks up 62 yards on this play. Through the air, Johnson was 9 of 18 for 254 yards on the night. Two plays later, Johnson in from a few yards out to make it a 24-17 prep disadvantage as they was able to get into the end zone, but it was just too much for the Bengals. A 61-yard touchdown play coming up here would make it a two-score game. Cathedral Prep with a very surprising back-to-back -back loss on their home turf. They fall in this one 45 to 24. Let's head to Mercyhurst University's Saxon Stadium. Undefeated Harbor Creek taking on Mercyhurst Prep. This one was a dandy. Huskies leading 7-0 midway through the fourth quarter, and their defense was Outstanding. They get the stop on fourth down, keeping the Lakers out of the end zone. Next offensive series for Harbor Creek. They play conservative. They try to get the end around, but Jacob Hanks is there for the big stop. Huskies forced to punt. Mercyhurst Prep back inside the red zone after this nice pitch and catch as they are trying to get on the scoreboard and possibly tie things up with under five minutes to go. Another fourth down situation, still trailing by seven, and the Lakers... Well, they get denied. Steve Smith gets stood up as the Huskies' defense prevails yet again. Harbor Creek shuts out Mercyhurst Prep tonight. They are now 5-0 with an impressive 7-0 win, all because of the defense. At Linden Field, Cash visiting General McLean. As General McLean trying to get back into the win column on their home field as well, Tanner Neiman. Has some time scrambles out of the pocket. Good blocking downfield as well for the Eagles. And he protects that football, too, as he is brought down inside the 30. Then Neiman finds his receiver for the touchdown catch. 
and the Eagles were looking to kind of extend this lead throughout the second half of play. Then on their ensuing drive, they cough the ball up. Good defense for the Lancers, but unfortunately for them, it goes right back into the possession of Cash. Later on, it's Neiman with another scramble. Just had a great night using his legs, weaving his way down the field, comes to the near sideline, and then he's just going to safely slide inside the 20 to kill off the rest of the clock as Conneaut goes on to outscore General McLean tonight. Your final score, 36 to 14. To War Memorial Field in Warren, where the Dragons student body was rowdy and patriotic, taking on Meadville. First quarter action. Bulldogs go to the ground. Gavin Long stretch, appropriately named there, with the first down carry name. and the nice sweep for the first down run. Bulldogs would find the end zone thanks to the ground attack as the drive continues for Meadville. Arian Cotterman powers in from 13 yards out for the score. Meadville on the board up seven at that point, and they simply never look back. Rolling Warren in this one, 53 to six, the final as the Bulldogs get the win. Franklin hosting Fort LaBeouf, staying in Region 7. Knights on the move here. And Ian Haynes, of course, the all-time District 10 passing leader for career passing. And he throws to Dalton Buckley. That usually works out. Watch him make some moves down the near sideline. And Buckley can't be taken down here. LaBeouf finally able to get him down inside the 30. Later on in the drive, more from Haynes connecting with Cade Adams and coming right at you. Front of the end zone. Touchdown makes it 14-7. Franklin on the board. LaBeouf on the move now. How about Jack Rimpa with the carry here? Bison settling for a field goal. That's Ben Turry. Fort LaBeouf goes <laughs> on the road and they kick the field goal here. They defeat Franklin. Your final score, 24-14 as they get the win. A tremendous crowd on hand in Northeast for homecoming night. Great pickers hosting Fairview late first half. Tigers trailing 7-6, to six, looking for the big play before halftime. However, Northeast defense there to break it up. Casey Birch on the play. We'll hear from him in a moment. Northeast with that one-point lead. Opening drive for Fairview in the third. Travis Burge keeps the drive going on the little run there. And then two plays later, Burge has his pass picked off by Birch. We're going the other way. And see you later. He's going all the way for the touchdown as he is able to get into the end zone and score it. Northeast picks up its first win of the season. And how appropriate it comes on homecoming night. They go on to outscore Fairview 24 to 6. Northwestern visiting Eisenhower. Riley Memorial Field Knights homecoming weekend as well. Wildcats trying to spoil the party. Second quarter. Knights down 14 to 3. Going forward on fourth down here is Owen Trumbull hitting Dylan Benson in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown Knights as they trail by four Wildcats. Too much in this one. Ryan Tool, he's always a big troublemaker here in terms of trying to expose defenses. Keeps the football here. Even with a high snap, takes off, gets the first down. The next play, it's more from the Wildcats and more trouble here. Tool over the middle with a dime completion to Derek Albert for the first down. That would lead to a Northwestern field goal. Wildcats pick up the win. And they win 31-10 out at Eisenhower. Meanwhile, Gerard paying a visit to Sager Town as the Jackets looking to get back into the win column as well. Sager Town still looking for that first win. Yellow Jackets picking up a nice bit of yardage there on the carry. Then a few plays later, high snap, but they handle it nicely as they continue to move the chains. Big run there on the far sideline, getting tripped up just before the goal line. Meanwhile, for Sager Town, as that drive would stall for the Jackets, Sager Town, Panthers trying to go on the move with the quarterback sneak, but wasn't doing there. But Gerard would punch it in one more time as they had a big night offensively with a short touchdown run there. Yellow Jackets go on to win this one big, 47-14. to Let's travel down to Titusville, where the Rockets were hosting Corey. Opening quarter. And the Rockets were on the move and looking sharp in doing so. Garrett Knapp rolls out of the pocket, has some time, throws a strike to a wide open Laird Stover. Point after is good. 7 0 Titusville. Still in the first quarter, the Rockets bringing some of that stingy defense as well. Levi Nosco coming up with the huge sack and the takedown. He should get another two points for that maneuver. However, it's Corey coming back and taking this one. The final score 13 to 10 over Titusville. How about Union City hosting Mercer at the Bears' Den? Pick things up in the fourth quarter of action here. Union City in control to score 26 13 in the lead. Logan Kesselring breaking tackles and taking names as he rumbles his way to the Mercer 36-yard line. Oddly specific. Bears would feed Kesselring again. <laughs> That's very specific. Sweeping right and taking it all the way. 
as uh, he goes for the touchdown. Union City, the easy score there. Bears knock off the Mustangs, 32 to 13. Your final. Let's head over to Iroquois High School, home again. As this week they were taking on Red Bank Valley in a non-region game. Opening drive for the Braves, Antonio Rodriguez. Check out the power and the footwork as he's able to carry it for 20 yards, setting up a first and goal. But unfortunately for the Braves. The drive would stall on downs. So here comes Red Bank. They march the other way. Ray Schreckengoss gets the carry. Just look at how many tackles he breaks off before he finally is taken down inside the 15-yard line. Same drive, but to start the second quarter, Kobe Bonanno gets the carry, finds Pader easily. The point after was good. Red Bank Valley goes on to win. They defeat Iroquois 41 to 6. Out of town scores to get you before the break. Seneca falls in a shutout. Lakeview winning 29 0. And Oil City survives a near rally from Dubois 55 54 as the Beavers missed a two point conversion with five seconds to play in that one. Still to come on Friday Night Lights, we got much more high school football action from week number five. Plus, it's the regular season opener at home for the Erie Otters. We'll head down to the EIA. Come up next after this.